Welcome everybody, it's uh, Dr. Matthew Pishinari here and we're starting our semester two with uh, a review and a sense of intermediate grammar. Now it may seem like we're going what we say idiomatically over the same ground again but in this uh, subject intermediate grammar we're really going to explore in a little bit more detail some of the uh, areas that we did touch upon in semester one but this is going to be more advanced more in depth and in a way less focus on the actual techniques to teach grammar and the grammar itself so the focus of uh, this lecture is the simple present tense it's probably not as uh, functional a tense as many other tenses are it's almost like a bedrock tense yes and so the base form of the verb only verbs have tenses yes and so the present tense is the base form of the verb now it does have uh, specific functions it doesn't get used as often as you would imagine and interestingly quite a few professional texts such as instruction writing do use the present simple the reason is is that the present simple is a very effective way of indicating a permanent or repetitive action they work work the simple present form of the verb work in a bank they work there that's a permanent action now sometimes we have habitual actions that occur on a very regular basis it might be coming to class twice a week it might be I catch the 10 o'clock bus every week and so again we would choose the simple present to form and tense the verb in these situations we also have scientific facts and uh, physical laws that are unchanging so again the simple present is the correct verb tense to use when we are discussing declaring the scientific facts for example the sun rises in the east the sun sets in the west these are unchanging and so the simple present is the verb tense of choice there may also be uh, the requirement to talk about past narratives or an anecdote that in a sense is atemporal it doesn't make time transcends time and so in these cases again the present simple is the verb tense of choice there's a good example there there's an old woman with thick glasses and a name tag all right many idioms also and proverbs um, will take the simple in a way it's a tense of principle repetition a stitch in time saves nine one of my favorite proverbs so again saves is in the simple present tense because inside of the situation time and place and that's what the simple present tense is very effective in doing simple present tense as we've already examined it has some quite specific purposes and it's important to realize the role that it does play in the English language verbs are so important to the English language as uh, the fundamental element really in the construction of meaning and so the tensing of the verb is also very very important what we find with the uh, simple present tense is that it has a particular purpose for repetitive actions and for statements that in a sense are universal well there's some things to be careful of yes with the simple present tense one of the things is is that it's responsive to number yes singular plural and also to person 
first, second and third. So please keep in mind that the uh, simple present tense form of verbs, especially in the third person, third person singular, will change. Yes, the uh, S gets added, doesn't it? I work, he, she or it works. Now, also important is that the simple present tense, as we've seen, does work very well. Well, it's almost a joined at the hip, as we say, another beautiful idiom in terms of verbs, adverbs, I should say, of frequency. Make sure that when we're using adverbs of frequency, such as seldom, always, never, that these are placed just before the simple present tense form of the verb. I always go to work at seven o'clock in the morning. I seldom take a nap in the afternoon. And so there we have the adverb of frequency between the subject, for example, I, and the verb, in this case, the simple present tense form of the verb. So that's something to be careful with. Don't go placing the adverb of frequency away from the simple present tense of the verb in these cases. On the other hand, what a great uh, phrasing of contrast. Yes, on the other hand, on the one hand, on the other hand. Yes, on the other hand, when we have these um, frequency of expression phrases, for example, once a week, every now and again, we place these either at the very beginning of a sentence or at the very end of a sentence. We wouldn't, unlike with the adverbs of frequency in the present simple tense, we wouldn't place them in between the subject and the verb. What we do is we isolate them either at the beginning of the sentence, every day, yes, once in a while, I will or I go to McDonald's or I go to McDonald's once in a while. So you can see there's a clear difference between the adverbs of frequency and these particular phrases of frequency. And these are the sort of um, important uh, points in the usage of the present simple tense and those associated elements in language which will really recommend you as an expert writer and speaker of English, which is what I think we all want to be, don't we? All right, well, we've come to the end of the lecture on uh, the simple present tense. Easiest way for me to think about it is always to refer back to the uh, base form of the verb. The base form, to have, to hold, to know, to sleep. Well, that's going to be the form of the tense. One of the nice things about the simple present tense is that its application is quite specific. And it's not too difficult to, in a way, make a mess of. Sorry, there's another idiom, to make a mess of it. Yes, the reason being is that it um, doesn't change the form, except probably, as we mentioned, in that third person uh, singular. I work, first person singular, third person singular, he, she, or it works. They're really the only... Um, form or morphological issues that we have to be considerate of. Otherwise, yes, when we are talking about universal or repeated or principal type scenarios, then the simple present tense is the tense we use because it, in a sense, um, transcends the specific. Yes, I like ice cream. Well, there's not a specific reference there, is there? It's not that I like ice cream yesterday or tomorrow. I'm liking ice cream. I liked ice cream. 
it's telling you something very general about my likes and the world. I like ice cream. Will I like ice cream in five years time? According to that statement, most likely. All right. So the present simple tense, a good place to start in terms of understanding the tense structure of the English language.